Yo, yo, what is going on legends? Welcome to another video. Sunday chill, coffee. Does anybody want coffee? Some English sarcasm. It's all right, mate. The name of this road? You can't park there, sir. I know I can't park here. And a little bit of news and memes and other things that I like. First off, before we get started, this jumper is now live. Mentality is everything, it means the world to me. Like who you are right now is part of who you'll become. And it's all driven by mentality. And it's like a big thing from last year, especially, you know, like if you vibe with it, you vibe with it. It's only available till Tuesday in a crew neck jumper, oversized t-shirt and normal t-shirt. Can't wait to meet some of you legends rocking it wherever I go in the world this year. It's like games and that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> dive into it. First off, I feel like we should talk about the Open, you know, where all of us lot try to keep up with the games athletes. That's what makes the competition so special. Now, these statistics and charts are from the barbell spin, and it's pretty interesting in terms of participation. When I read through them, I was like, okay. First up, obviously, participation in general. In this year's Open, there was 344,396 athletes registered for the 2024 CrossFit Open, which is a 6.7% increase over 2023. That's a positive. However, when you look at participation broken down, it becomes very interesting. The bulk of the growth came from the Masters division. When looking at the 18 to 34 Open division, the male participation actually decreased, female participation increased, meaning there was a total increase in that category. When looking at the teen division, every single category had a decrease in participation from the year before, which is in stark contrast to the masters divisions, which saw increase in every single category. What's interesting that for me is that, you know, you're looking at the youth participation is down. Even the male participation is down. So what does that mean for the future of the sport? I don't really know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the answer. I'm just looking at it like, it's pretty interesting. It's like kind of, it's cool to see how many people in the age groups, the master's divisions, like out there kicking ass. All right, now I haven't made a news video since point one. So quickly, point two and point three. Point two was going around in circles for 20 minutes, of which a Finnish man came out on top, Henrik Hapalainen, with 997 reps. I'm just honestly disappointed no one got a thousand. What's wrong with you all? You suck. <laughs> very good, very good score. Someone did, but they were told they didn't. And on the women's side, the winner, Emily Claw, although there was no video, so, but 926 reps. And then point three, where a lot of us, including myself, spent a lot of time like this. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Probably the most relatable meme from it. That workout started off hard, got harder. The minute break just made you realize how hard the first part was before it got harder and then finished really hard. Or you didn't finish like me and a lot of people. I thought it was a great workout, actually. Just like pure CrossFit, just real like work if you wanted to. Or a lot of time just standing at the bar, like the meme. Anyway, of which on the male side, Yonikoski took the win with a time of 8.03, four seconds ahead of Colton Mertens. And on the female side, Rebecca Fusilier with a time of 7.52, 43 seconds ahead of second place. That's a big margin. People were talking about elbows, but I'm not here to get into that. I'm just here to spread the news, you know? And she crushed it. Meaning that after all the video reviews are in, the scores are in, and it now has been confirmed by CrossFit, this is the top five on the male side for the Open. The first three workouts of this CrossFit game season, Yonikoski, 30 points and pocketing a nice $15,000. I'm, I'm gonna do some maths, hold on, hold on. I don't know if it's gonna work. Right, so 20, 20 minutes, 28, 34, 34 minutes. For 34 minutes of work, man was getting $441 for every minute he worked out in the open. Damn. Okay, okay. <laughs> Second place was Saxon Panchik, taking home $10,000. Jay Crouch, $7,500. Luca Vunyak, $6,000. And fifth place, Noah Olsen, $5,000. Then on the female side, Mirjam von Roar. Do the roar. Do the roar. Taking the win with 40 points. Winning the first workout, coming second in the last workout. 37th in the middle. Gracie Walton, second. Annika Greer, third. Oriol Lowe in fourth. Caroline Prevost, fifth. Hey, it's only the first three workouts and it's only the open. 
But it's a little stamp of authority, you know? You're like, all right, I'm coming for you this season. A little flex. I am massive. I am so massive. Oh my gosh. Also, actually, there was a cool video from this uh, open. <laughs> Jason Hopper turned Patrick Vellner's point three, where he gave it everything. He showed up and blowed up. Uh, he turned it into a motivational video, and I thought it was great. It's the sort of, you know, banter we need. Jason Hopper's a funny dude. And it always seems to be Pat Vellner. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. <laughs> I just, I just put on my story, actually. Uh, six minutes into the video so far-ish. It's taken me three and a half hours to get here. Shooting and editing takes a long time. Anyway, next part of the season, quarterfinals, April 3rd to April 23rd. And Dave Castro told us about it. He said it's not going to be that interesting. The quarterfinals aren't the spectacle that I think people might want them to be or expect them to be. Maybe they can be in the future, but as they are now, they are not that. It will be a step up from the open, though, is what he said, sort of thing. You can make, um, you can make them a little more difficult. Or, or specific to top athletes, where in the open it's it's not really, it's made for everyone. Honestly, I don't see anyone really tripping up here unless they have an injury. And then it's on to the live semi-finals at the start of May, which is always an exciting time. Something always happens. Then, start of August, it's on to the games in its new location. And Jazz and I will get to explore a new city full of legends at the time. You guys. Hopefully rocking this t-shirt, link down below. Thank you for support. Anyway, that's probably enough of open talk and season talk. There really hasn't been that much going on in the CrossFit space other than that. Otherwise, I'd be making more news videos, <laughs> is the honest, uh, is an honest statement. However, there have been a few things. First one, Danielle Brandon's documentary has come out on YouTube. Obviously, huge personality within the space. Always brings fire to the competition floor. She opens up about her life and how she got to where she is and the DB energy. It's a, it's a, Deep, sick documentary. Also, if you want to follow the male winner of the Open this year, Jonah Koski has started up his YouTube channel again. He's going to be documenting his way up to hopefully the CrossFit Games. So definitely check that out. And if you want some more CrossFit lifestyle content, Tim Paulson has uploaded Identity, a live free film, which is a 44 minute thing around his life here on YouTube as well. All of those things will be linked down below if you want to watch more kind of just lifestyle content stuff. Have a good Sunday Monday, you know? And then something that I didn't actually cover when the news came out, but I want to talk about it right now, is that the Rogue Invitational is moving and it's moving to Scotland. If you've lived under a rock for the last month, you may not know this and this may surprise you. And when the news came out, it surprised me and I found it an interesting one. I think it's a good move for them. Although, is it in October? September, October time. Scotland at that time of the year. Definitely don't pack your swimming shorts. But yeah, the Rogue Invitational will be in Aberdeen in November. Even colder. <laughs> you won't need no sunglasses. The weather will be disgusting. And people will talk like that. I don't know how to flush a toilet after they've had a s*** me. Well, it was f***ing one of yes. Disgusting! Personally, I think it's a good move. You know, when I saw this news, I was like, oh, like, I'm going to go to the Rogue Invitational this year because it's in the home country and it's like, will be an experience. And I think a lot of the community will think that too and probably end up getting a bigger crowd than when it was in Ohio or Texas. That's where it was, right? I'm flagging now. <laughs> Nearly seven o'clock. But what I found interesting about this is that obviously they're moving it to to Scotland, and I hope for the future of the Rogue Invitational, they start like touring around different countries. I feel like that would be a really cool thing. I understand the game staying in America. It's where the vast majority of the audience come and watch, for, and it's like the birthplace of it kind of thing. But obviously a lot of the best athletes in the world and strong men, strong women, compete at the Rogue Invitational, and it will give other countries opportunities to turn up and watch them. Compete for a massive prize purse if blooming uh, crypto keeps going up because part of the contribution to the old 
prize purse is Bitcoin. And that seems to be flying at the moment, doesn't it? I don't have any Bitcoin. I would have liked to have invested in Bitcoin a long time ago, but also when I can't see a coin, but then I guess my bank account's pretty much virtual. Don't matter. <laughs> I'm just straying from the thing. Anyway, team, I hope you have had a good Sunday. Hope you have a great Monday. No one's told you today you're an absolute legend. And uh, go crush this week. What did I share earlier, actually? I shared this earlier on my Instagram. It says, be happy, not because everything is good, but because you see the good in everything. You know, things may not be going great, but pick out the little things that day that are the little wins and just keep chugging along. You guys are the best. Smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. Leave a nice comment and we'll catch you in the next video. Over and out.